Hello everyone. So today we'll be doing ETS official GRE quantitative reasoning and the topic today is quantitative comparison questions. Now for the first question, the average of four donations to a charity was 80. So let's suppose we have A plus B plus C plus D divided by four and the average is 80. So the average of four donations, so these are our donations and it's $80. Now two of the donations, so A, B, C, and D. So two of the donations, two of the four donations were 90. This is 90 and this is 60. So the average of the other two donations, so the average of the other two donations would, would be what? Now the average was 80, so it means that all four, we can assume that all four of them were 80. Now, if this is 90, then we are plus 10 and this is 60. So we are down by 20. So net we are down by 10 and this, and this 10 needs to be compensated over here. So the average would be more than 80. So the average of C and D needs to be more than 80 because we need to compensate for this loss of 10. And we can also do it like this as well. So 90 plus 60 plus C plus D divided by 4 equals to 80. Now C plus D would be equal to 8 for the 32. So 320 minus 90 plus 60 is 150. So C plus D equals to 170. Now the average of C and D would be 85. Now 85 is more than 80. Hence option A is correct. That quantity A is greater than quantity B. Now for question two, now we have over here, we have these intervals, 15 to 24 age intervals and number of employees. Now, what is your range? Range is maximum minus minimum. Now the range of the ages of the 20 oldest employees. So the 20 oldest employees would be so 18, uh, 18 employees are coming under the age group of 55 to 64. And we need to have two more because we need to find out the range of the oldest 20 people. So we have these two ranges. So we have 45 to 54 and we have 55 to 64. So the maximum range would be what? So let's suppose the, in this particular range, the employee is 45 years old. And in this particular range, the employee is 64 years old. So the maximum range would be 64 minus 45. That is 19 and the minimum range can be let's suppose the employee is 54 years old and in this particular range the employee is 55 years old so 55 minus 54 equals to 9 so the range can be either the minimum value can be number one and the maximum value can be nine so we are not sure so either it can be less than 11 or more than 11 so option d is correct so the sum of the first seven positive integers, the sum of the first seven positive integers and seven times the median of the seven positive integers. So the first positive integers would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And these are consecutive numbers. So in, when we have consecutive numbers, so mean is also equal to your median when we have consecutive numbers. So the median in this particular case will be, so we have seven digits. So seven plus one divided by two will going to give us fourth. So fourth number would be our median. So seven times the median. So what will be the average? Average would be one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven divided by uh, seven. And this should be equal to your mean. And we know when we have, and we also know that when we have consecutive numbers, so mean is equal to your median. So median now we know is four, that will be equal to your mean. And if we sum all of them, this would be equal to 28. So the sum of the first seven positive integers would be 28 and seven times the median. So median is four. If you multiply four by seven, that is also 28. So both quantities are equal hence option c is correct 
question four, the number of two positive integers for which the units digit is not equal to the tens digit. So let's first find out how many two digit positive integers we can have. So the first one would be 10 and the last one would be 99. So how many digits from 10 to 99? So we have 89 plus one. So from 11 to 99, we have 89 and 89 plus one. So 10 and 99 are inclusive. So we have 90 numbers between 10 and 99. And we also need to find out the number of two digit positive integer for which the unit digit is not equal to the tens digit. So we cannot have 11, we cannot have 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, and 99. So we cannot have nine numbers. So 90 minus nine would be 81. So 81 digits satisfy this condition. So 81 is more than 80, hence option A is correct. Okay, so in a probability experiment, G and H are independent events. The probability that G will occur is R. And the probability that H is uh, will going to occur is S. And where both R and S are greater than zero. Now, when we have two independent event, it can also have it can also take place that two independent event can take place together. So this is event G and this is event H. The probability of event G is R. This whole is R. And this whole circle is represented by s now in between this shaded region would equal to so this is the region where both will going to occur so this is the place where both will going to occur g and h so this area is represented by r into s so we have if you have a multi uh, probability of r as 50 percent probability of s is 30 percent so probability of both occurring would be 0.5 into 0.3. If R equals to 0.5 and S equals to 0.3. Now the probability that the either G will occur or H will occur, but not both. So either G will occur. So this is the probability of G, but not both. So we don't want this shaded region. So it can be R. So this region would be, this region would be, so if I change the color, So this region would be R minus RS and this region would be S minus RS. So we don't want this middle region. So what do we get? So R minus RS plus S minus RS. So we have R plus S minus 2 RS. Now, if I change the color back to red, so quantity A is R minus R plus S minus 2 RS and quantity B is R plus S minus RS. Now, R plus S minus RS represents G will occur, H will, will occur or G and H both will going to occur. So if we have this region, so R plus S minus RS would be represented by this whole region. Over here, we are considering this region and we are excluding the middle one. This one includes the middle one. And how do I know this? Because this region is R minus RS. This region is S minus RS and this region is RS. So if I add all of them, R minus RS plus S minus RS plus RS, RS, RS cancels out. And we get R plus S minus RS. So quantity B is greater than quantity A. Hence option B is correct. Okay, so we have set S and set T. And the number of different possible values of product X, Y. So if I multiply 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 5, 8 and 13. So I'll be having 5 numbers. So 1 multiply by 2 is 2, 1 multiply by 3 is 3. If I multiply 4 by 2, 3, again, I'll be having 5 numbers. So total numbers I'll be having would be 
20. So 1 multiplied by 5 times, 4 multiplied by 5 numbers, 7 multiplied by 5 numbers, 10 multiplied by 5 numbers will be 20. But there will also be an overlap. For example, 1 8 is a 8 and 4 2 is a 8 also. So the number of different possible values of x, y will definitely be less than 20. Because the total number we are getting is 20. So we might have an overlap. For example, 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 8 is 8. 4 multiplied by 2 is also 8. So these are numbers which are repeating. So if the total numbers are 12 and the total number of uh, sorry, the total number of total numbers are 20 and within 20, there are overlaps. So the so unique numbers would be definitely less than 20. So the correct option would be B. So 20 is greater than the number of different possible values of uh, product X and Y. And we are looking for different possible values. Total number of values would be 20. But within 20, we would be having overlaps. So the question six has an answer of B. So the graph above shows a distribution of three different flavors of hard candies, cherry, lemon, and lime. In a candy jar, if all the lemon candies are removed, so let's suppose we have 15 lemon candies, 25 lime candies, and 60 cherry candies. And if we remove lemon, so what fraction of the remaining candies in the jar will be lime candy? So we'll be having 25 lime candies and the total candies that are there would be 85. So five fives are five, 17 is a, so the correct option is five by 17. Option D is correct. Okay, so R is a list of 15 consecutive integers and T is a list of 21 in, uh, consecutive integers. Let's suppose we have 15 con consecutive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. This is your list R and T is a list of 21 consecutive integers. The median of the integer in R, so median would be 15 plus 1 divided by 2 is uh, 8. So 8th number would be the median. So 8th number would be the median. Now we can also have any other numbers. For example, we can also have any other series. For example, we can start with 21, 22, 23, 24, whatever. So 8th number is the median. Now the median of the integer in the list R is equal to the least integer in T. So the T set is starting from 8 numbers. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and it goes on till 21 numbers. So we have 15 numbers over here, out of which 8th number is 8th number is the median. So how many overlaps we'll be having? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 numbers which are overlapping. 7 numbers over here. So 7 numbers over here. 8 numbers would be overlapping. And how many extra numbers? So set S consists of 21 numbers. So 21 minus 8 would be how much? 13. So beyond this, we have 13 more numbers. So these are your common numbers between R and S. So this is R and from this point to this point we have S. So this is your S and this is your R. So we have from this point to this point we have seven numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight numbers are overlapping and beyond this number there are 13 more numbers. So how many unique numbers there would be 13 plus 8 plus 7 that is equal to 28. So correct option is C. Question 9 from the point 5 points A, B, C, D, E. Uh, line above 3 different points are to be randomly selected. What is the probability that the coordinates of the 3 points selected? So the, we need to select 3 points. So with all, with all uh, three points selected with, will all be positive. So if we select, we have two points which are negative and we have three points which are positive. So the first point would be the probability that we select 
the point which is positive would be 3 by 5. So if we select C, how many points are remaining? Two points out of four points. So 2 by 4. If we select D, then only one point is remaining out of total 3. Now 3 and 3 cancels out. 2 1s are, 2 2s are. It would be 1 by 10. So the correct option is A. Now in a distribution of 850 different measures measurements, X centimeters is a 73rd percentile. X centimeter is a 73rd percentile. If there are 68 centimeters in the distribution that are greater than Y, so Y and X, so we have, this is your 73rd percentile and we have 68 measurements in between Y and X. And we have total 850 numbers. So if there are 68 measures in the distribution that are greater than Y centimeters, but less than X centimeter, then Y is approximately at what percentile in the distribution? So first of all, what is the, what is the percentage of 68 with respect to 80, 850? So 68 divided by 850 into 100. 5 twos are, 5 seventeens are, 17 ones are, 17 fours are, 8. So this represents 8% 8 of 850. So if this is 73rd percent, so 73 minus 8 would be 65th percentile. So the correct option is E. Question 11. Each of the following linear equation defines Y as a function of X for all integers from 1 to 100. For which of the following equation is the standard deviation of Y value corresponding to all X value is the greatest? Now, standard deviation is the deviation. So over here, if there's one change in y, y uh, if there's one change in x, y changes by one third. If there's one change in y, the y changes by one upon two. Over here, it is linear. Over here, if there's a change, x changes by one, y changes by two. And if x changes by one, y changes by three. Now 40, 50 and 20, minus 20, they are constant number. They won't have any impact on standard deviation. Now if X changes, which equation changes the most? So that's equation three because it has the highest gradient. So correct option is E. Question 12, for a certain distribution, the measurement 12.1 is 1.5 standard deviation below the mean. So let's suppose this is your mean and we have 1.5 standard deviation below and the measurement and this measurement is 12.1 and the measurement 17.5 if this is your mean is 3 standard deviation up so 3 standard deviation up and this is your 17.5 so let's make an equation so let's suppose x bar is your mean minus 1.5 standard deviation equals to 12.1 if this is your mean x bar plus 3 standard deviation equals to 17.5 and what we need to find out, what is the mean? So if I multiply this equation by 2, this would be 2x bar minus 3 standard deviation equals to 12, uh, 25. 12.5 12 into 2 is 25. And we have x bar plus 3 standard deviation equals to 17.5. If I add both the equation, this would be 3x bar. Both of them cancels out. 17.5 plus 25 equals to 42.5. And x bar 42.5 divided by 3 equals to 14.1. This is not 12.5, this is 12.1, my mistake. So 12.1 into 2 is 24.2. This is not 25, this is 24.2. 24.2 plus 17.5, this is 41.7. So 41.7 divided by 3 is 13.9 so option b is correct question 13 set a has 50 members and set b has 53 members now at least two of the members in set a are not in set b so if we make set a and set b so two so let's make it much more accurate so this is set A, this is set B. Let's suppose there are at least two. So we are saying that there are two members in set A that are not in set B. So the total number which are in, 
which are in both set A and set B would be, so if we have 50 numbers in set A, that would be 48. It means that 48 numbers in A, we have 50 numbers, we have 53 numbers in B. So 48 numbers in B are such that there are also found in A. So there would be five unique numbers in B that are not found in A. So which of the following could be the numbers of members in set B that are not in set A? So there would be five. This is the minimum amount, minimum amount. So we have B as the minimum amount. So because we have at least two numbers, so we can have three, four, five. So the second scenario would be that if we have at least two of the members in set A, not in set B, so it is at least, so we can have three, four, five, six, seven. We can also have this number as 50. So if the 50 numbers in set A are not in set B, then all 53 numbers in set B would be not found in set A. So we can have all the values from 5 to 53. So this is the minimum amount and this would be the maximum amount. So the correct option would be B, C, D, E, N, F. That's it. This is part one and we'll be doing part two as well. Thank you very much class. And do practice a lot so that you can get a perfect score.